Hello friends, after learning of basic quality control tools, frequently used concepts in continual improvement, their examples and practical application of them, now it's time to start the learning of Six Sigma as a concept and approach. In this learning, we are going to study multiple tools, basic as well as advanced as we will approach into each phase of the Six Sigma. Before going to start phase by study of the Six Sigma, let's understand first what is Six Sigma and why it is called as a Six Sigma. So let's begin. What is Six Sigma? Six Sigma is a focused approach used to reduce variation in any kind of process. In earlier days, it was limited to manufacturing only. But its proven results extend the use of it across all processes like pharmaceuticals, healthcare, accounting and finance, BPOs and many more, almost every area of the life. Sigma is a Greek letter used to describe variability in the process. It is called as standard deviation in statistical terms. Let's understand standard deviation as a concept at this stage as it is very important to understand the meaning of Six Sigma. The standard deviation denoted by STDV is a measure of how far the observations in a sample deviate from the mean. It is analogous to an average distance independent of the direction from the mean. The standard deviation is the most commonly reported measure of dispersion. If the data are normally distributed, then the standard deviation and mean can be used to determine what proportion of the observations fall within any given range of values. The population standard deviation is calculated by using the following formula. It is denoted by sigma, which is equal to square root of 1 upon n, summation goes from i is equal to 1 to n, xi minus mu bracket square. In this equation, x1, x2, x3 up to xi are the observed values of the sample atoms. Mu is the mean value of these observations and n is the number of observations in a sample. And the sample standard deviation is calculated as it is denoted as s which is equal to square root of 1 upon n minus 1 summation goes from i is equal to 1 to n xi minus x bar bracket square. The only change is to divide by n minus 1 instead of n when calculating a sample standard deviation. We will see this concept in much detail in the study of major phase of the Six Sigma. At this point of time, remember only meaning of it. After understanding the meaning of Sigma, the next question is what is Six Sigma? Look at the below graph. The statistical representation of Six Sigma describes quantitatively how a process is performing. To achieve a Six Sigma, a process must not be produced more than 3.4 defects per million opportunities. A Six Sigma defect is defined as anything outside of customer specifications. Now let's see how the term Six Sigma came. Look at this diagram. In a normally distributed process, if mean plus minus Three Sigma range of output is between USL and LSL, then around 99.997% of points of the output will be non-defective or we can say the process is at Six Sigma level. Now, if the USL and LSL of a process are such a that the difference between USL and LSL is less than Six Sigma, that is six into standard division value of the process, then it won't be a Six Sigma process. To make this process a Six Sigma process, you have to reduce the value of Sigma. The Six Sigma methodology broadly tells about how to reduce the value of Sigma and make a process as a Six Sigma process. DPMO, that is defects per million opportunity, is another concept in Six Sigma used for counting defects in statistical processes. A Six Sigma process will have 99.997% of accuracy or 3.4 DPMO, which is extremely accurate. Now let's see why we are talking about Six Sigma, not 5, 7 or 8. Because achieving that level of accuracy itself is very difficult and lot of systematic approach is required apart from capital investment. But if you want to improve the process further to 7 or 8 Sigma level, it increases the cost of process drastically to achieve the little more accuracy. Even though some of the aerospace company has now started talking about 7 Sigma levels, but most of the organization feels that up to the 6 Sigma is a good enough. Running a process in 5 Sigma level is quite possible. In fact, most of the traditional companies run in 3 to 4 Sigma levels. But a process which is running in 5 Sigma level could be improved to a 6 Sigma level by following some systematic approach and little more investment. Now the next important topic is a Six Sigma approach. 
Six Sigma is a project based approach. The projects having large impact of customer satisfaction and significant impact on bottom line are selected to initiate projects under Six Sigma. One of the major differences between Six Sigma and other improvement approaches is its significant dependence on data based approach using statistical methods. In the overall approach, the practical problem is converted into a statistical problem. This is done by mapping the process, defining key process input variables, we are calling it as a KPIVs or Xs, and key process output variables, we are calling it as a KPOVs or Ys. The power of statistical tools is used to determine a statistical solution, and this is then converted into a practical solution. Six Sigma projects follow two project methodologies inspired by Deming's PDCA cycle. These methodologies composed of five phases each. DMAIC, popularly known as DMEC, and DMADV. DMEC is used for projects aimed at improving an existing business processes, whereas DMADV is used for projects aimed at creating a new product or process designs. Now let's see first the DMEC. The DMEC project methodology has five phases. Define. This is the very first phase in DMEC and it includes define the system, the voice of the customer and their requirements, the project goals specifically. Measure. In this phase, we measure key aspects of the current process and collect relevant data. Calculate the as-is process capability. Analyze. In this phase, we analyze the data to investigate and verify cause and effect relationships. Determine what the relationships are and attempt to ensure that all factors have been considered. And seek out root cause of the defect under investigations. Improve. This is the next important phase in DMEG. In this phase, we optimize the current process based upon data analysis using techniques such as design of experiment, OKOK or mistake proofing and standard work to create a new future state process. We validate the benefits by setting up pilot runs to establish process capability. And control. The last and the most important phase in the Six Sigma. We must control the future state process to ensure that any deviations from the target are corrected before they result in a defects. It includes implementation of control systems such as statistical process control, production boards, visual workplaces and continuously monitoring the process. This process is repeated until the desired quality level is obtained. DMADV or DFSS The DMADV project methodology also known as DFSS that is designed for Six Sigma. It also features five phases. Define. In this phase, we define the design goals that are consistent with customer demands and the enterprise strategy. Measure. In this phase, we are measuring and identifying city cues, that is, characteristics that are critical to quality, measure product capabilities, production process capability, and measure risk. Analyze. Analyze phase talks about development and designing alternatives. Design. In this phase, we work to improve alternatives based suited per analysis in the previous step. And the last is verify. This is like validation in which we verify the design, set up pilot runs, implement the production process and hand it over to the process owner. Implementation roles. Six Sigma identifies several key roles for its successful implementation. Executive leadership includes the CEO and other members of the top management. They are responsible for setting up a vision for Six Sigma implementation. They also empower the other role holders with the freedom and resources to explore the new ideas for breakthrough improvements by transiting departmental barriers and overcoming the inherent resistance to change. Champions They take responsibility for Six Sigma implementation across the organization in an integrated manner. The executive leadership draws them from the upper management. Champions also act as a mentors to black belts. Master black belts they are identified by champions, act as in-house coaches on Six Sigma. They devote 100% of their time to the Six Sigma. They assist champions and guide black belts as well as green belts. Apart from statistical tasks, they spend their time on ensuring consistent application of Six Sigma across various functions and departments. Black belts, they operate under the master black belts to apply Six Sigma methodology to specific projects. They also devote 100% of their valued time to the Six Sigma. They primarily focus on Six Sigma project execution 
and special leadership with special tasks. Whereas, champions and master black belts focus on identifying projects or functions for Six Sigma. Green belts. They are the employees who take up the Six Sigma implementation along with their other job responsibilities, operating under the guidance of black belts. According to the proponents of the system, special training is needed for all of these practitioners to ensure that they follow the methodology and use the data-driven approach correctly. Some organizations use additional belt colors, such as yellow belts, for employees that have basic training in the Six Sigma tools and generally participate in the projects, and white belts, for those locally trained in the concepts but do not participate in the project team. This is an introduction of Six Sigma as a breakthrough continual improvement strategy. We will be starting with DMEC approach to study various concepts, formats, tools, examples, concerns and possible solutions for them and many more from the next video onwards. I am going to start with the defined phase in the next video. Share this video in your entire group to improve their life at professional level. Add your valuable comments and suggestions regarding it. Click on the bell icon after subscription and select an option of get all notifications so that you will not miss any important information related to Lean and Six Sigma. And finally, thank you for watching.